morning, Pastor Jerry Scott here. It's Christmas Eve. I thank you for the opportunity of sharing with you in this coffee break reflection. I'm sitting in my dining room this morning, prayerfully, thoughtfully, thinking over the day, over life, reflecting, and the sky that I look out on is sort of a reflection of the world we live in. Dark, ominous, threatening. Hmm. Yep. We've bravely faced a lot of storms this year, haven't we? Have you, like me, arrived at this Christmas Eve emotionally spent? The troubles have come to us in large and small ways, all of us, knowing the weird, the strange, the chaotic. Even we pastors, <laughs> we've tried to bring worship to you digitally, webcasts, cameras, lights, sound, and we know it's a poor substitute for being in the room. It's just our weirdness. What's yours? And yet, and yet, there's light in the darkness. That's what I want to bring to you this morning. There's a reason for hope. God sent his son and John says of him, listen to these words from John chapter one. Life itself was in him and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. By faith, we choose to encounter the holy. We choose to find renewal in the promise we choose to know the goodness of the love of God because we choose to stand in the light. Some will surrender to the darkness and give in to despair. I will not. Will you? I read an essay in the New York Times this morning written about the inadequacy of virtual worship, the difficulty of finding God's presence while staring at a screen in the living room. The author talked about his family's choice to dress if they were, as if they were going into church, that they put their chairs in rows in the living room like pews, and they followed along with the responses, and eventually they found it tiresome and their attention lagged. But I loved his conclusion. He wrote this, One recent weekend we gathered once more for Zoom church. My wife logged on from her military outpost. I logged on with our kids. I settled into my role at tech support and two of the younger kids lingered on the couch, happily coloring, and as I followed along in the service, something surprised me. I looked up from the computer and I saw my daughter standing in the middle of the living room, her tender, beautiful voice resounding through the space. She was singing, and I found myself ushered into the presence of something that defies description. In this line, he goes on to express the one way that his family has chosen to stand in the light. He says, we stay in virtual, virtual church because attendance is not about what church gives us. It is our way of offering something to God. It's a small rebellion, a way of saying there's more to life than simply the acquisition of more things. Friend, this Christmas... I pray that each one of us will choose to stand in the light, to use that author's words to make it a way of declaring our rebellion against the darkness, to confess our faith, to simply, con to ex simply accept the promise of Jesus, even when we feel nothing but soul fatigue. Let's choose to stand in the light that the darkness of sin, the darkness of COVID, the darkness of political strife, the darkness of racial division, the darkness of personal pain cannot extinguish. Regardless of our circumstances, this is the truth of the day. The word became flesh, John says. He made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glorious glory, his radiance, his light the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Tonight, as we come to Christmas Eve, be it in a church sanctuary for some, or in the living room for others, or even somewhere alone, I pray that we will bring this declaration to mind. When Jesus spoke again to the people, John said, He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Confess it aloud. I choose to stand in the light, and he will dispel the darkness. My prayer is this Christmas God will give you 
hope and joy and peace and love by his spirit. I pray that you will know the sweet comfort of Jesus in your life. I pray that you will be blessed by the light that dispels the darkness. Let's pray together. Father, we come again in the precious name of Jesus, thanking you that he came to be light in a darkened world. Lord, as we're closing out 2020, there is much darkness. But I pray that you would shine brightly in our lives. Give us a holy courage, Lord, to go and stand in the light, to declare in faith that Christ alone is our hope. Shine brightly in us and through us, I pray. Lord, I thank you for my friends who've met with me day by day via this medium, and I ask that you would bless their Christmas, that your presence would be very, very powerful in their lives today. I ask this in Jesus' wonderful and precious and holy name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for so many days that you have allowed me to come into your home by a coffee bake break. I'm going to be taking a few days off. I'll be back, God willing, January 4th. Until then, may God bless you. May he keep you. Merry Christmas. and Happy New Year.